I'm going to bring in audience questions shortly. We may have. I, I see about 20 questions yes, here. We may spill over a little bit because there's so much to talk about. But just briefly, a, a really important part of the book is about success and about the trappings of past success. Yeah, success could be the enemy of the future success. Exactly, so how we avoid those pitfalls. You'll, you'll have heard, obviously, of Sir Alex Ferguson, one of the greatest football managers of all time. He won 13 Premier League titles. It's a stretch of success that is comparable to the sort of success you experience. And I think as soon as he won a title, he would have been focusing on the next year. You, 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 cannot, the... You, cannot, you, you cannot dwell on success. One of, the, one of the victories you had against Karpov, you had three years, after, three years thereafter to sort of enjoy it, but you couldn't enjoy it because that time flies by. How do you make sure if you're successful on a micro level like some of us or on a macro level like you that you do not allow the past, the future, to be the victim of the past? It's, it's, again, you cannot rest on your laurels. And it's this one thing I knew from my early days, thanks to my mother. It's the, uh, it's, there is no perfect, perfect game. You can always, you know, find, you know, way to, ways to improve your, your, your chess. And, and there's a tendency. This is something that, you know, I, I urge everyone to do. If we lost, we knew we made a mistake. We had to go back and do some research and some work. If we won, oh, we rather open bottle of champagne than work hard. So I knew that every game I played at the highest level, the world championship match, even if I won the game, there was still plenty of material for me to analyze and find out what I did wrong because most likely the, the reason we won is because our opponent made the last mistake. And if you are on, uh, uh, on the top or if you are ahead uh, uh, of, 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 the, uh, of the pack, so most likely, you know, this is, this is the people behind you, your, the opponents that you beat, they, they, they're trying to actually to replace you. They look at your games with a microscope, they find these mistakes, and unless you find them as well and surprise them next, at the next event with new ideas, if you are, if you are no longer cutting edge, they, 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 will, they, will, they will step on you. So um, I always say, as long as you are willing to challenge your own excellence, you will never be short of motivation. So very quickly, two more little questions. One, related to what you've just said, once you'd won the world championship, the, the people who then came to chat, the person who would end up challenging you would have gone through such a rigorous process in order to meet you that it meant that I think over a period of something like 50 years, only two people who reached those finals failed to become a world champion. So in other words, there was... It, you were up against it when you, when, you, when you were defending your crown. How much time and how did you go about preparing? We talked about pre preparation earlier. Now, my, my, yeah, my, my, my routine hasn't changed yeah, from the days when I was a challenger to the days, you know, to the last days of my professional chess career. You know, I worked, you know, um, now just endless hours. So this is again, and that's, that was the reason for me to actually to walk away because I, I sensed that I, I lost my passion for innovations, for just, you know, my ability to actually to look for new ideas. Again, it's about your, it's, it's, it's like an inner fire so that you want, you want to make changes. So that's like, it's not just about winning, it's about making a difference. And the moment I recognized that my passion for making a difference was no longer there, I thought it was time to go elsewhere. Were you able to think, Gary? about innovations and new moves and new strategies. All the, all the time, all the time. My creative, my creative power uh, uh, almost hasn't diminished. Over were, you were, you, were you able to do that, not just when you were staring at a chessboard, but just in your mind? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, that's, exactly. So that's, by the way, you know, as often I heard, you know, from people who watch the, the Queen's Gambit, that is the whole, you know, images in, 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 in the head of the, of the Beth Harmon, the pictures the, the, of, the, of, the, of the pieces on the, on the ceiling, that was Hollywood exaggeration. Absolutely not. This is the way many, many chess players think without looking at the chess board. So you can just look around. This is the, because I, I don't need chess set. Even today, I can analyze the game in, in my head with, with, without any, any problem. Mitsuko Oshida, who's a great classical pianist, Japanese uh, originally, I think, but maybe now a British citizen herself, met her outside the Wigmore Hall in London. She said to me, I asked her, will she do the Mozart cycle again of sonatas? I think she said she didn't need to because it was in her head. Can, yeah. you, can you play games of chess in your head? Can you play against yourself? 
Yeah, analyzing it's not a problem. So this okay. is this, this final yeah. question for me before we go to the audience, and it's an important one. Mid nineteen nineties. One of the reasons why Gary Kasparov was a huge name in my household was because you took on machines. You took on Deep Blue. You won one. You drew one, and then I, th I think they didn't want to have a decider. Mm. Where have we come now? So 25, two and a half decades later, we, we, we are in such an important moment with machines and, and the, the capacity for machines to take over so many human activities and jobs. We don't know what the future holds. Can you encapsulate in just a minute or two where you stand now, what your thinking is about machines and their relationship with us? Look, you know, intelligent machines, they, just, they, they are tools that we invented to make us smarter, same way that machines made us stronger and, and, and faster in the past. Uh, uh, AI, it's not, um, it's not a magic wand, but it's not a terminator. It's not a harbinger of utopia or dystopia. Uh, it's, it's for us to understand so how we cooperate with, uh, collaborate with intelligent machines. And, uh, and I, I would call myself a realist, though many, many think it's, it's an op optimistic um, uh, forecast. But uh, I, uh, I believe, you know, that the, uh, the intelligent machines will help us to realize our wildest dreams. And um, uh, while machines dominate every game today, uh, there's no reason to worry because the game, each game, chess, Japanese chess called Shogi, Go, Dota, Starcraft, Texas Hold'em, Poker, every, every game is a closed system. And in, within the closed systems, machines will, will be always superior. So they just, you know, not because they're perfect, not because they can calculate everything to the end. Chess is nearly infinite game mathematically. It's 10 to the 46 power. Uh, uh, it's, it's with so many zeros, no machine uh, uh, can, 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 can go to the bottom of it. But they make fewer mistakes. That's a very important you know, uh, factor for us to incorporate in our relations with computers. Don't expect them to be perfect. Recognize that what they do, they, they, they limit the damage of our, of our, our mistakes. And, uh, um, and uh, um, there's no evidence, I, 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 at least I see not a shred of evidence that machines can transfer data from one closed system to another one. So basically, we still have room uh, for asking the right questions because while machines can ask questions, they don't know what questions are relevant. So we have an advantage of understanding what matters most. That's why I, I wouldn't worry too much. I wouldn't cry over spilled milk. And I look in the future as optimism. Absolutely fascinating. I want to bring in the audience here. So Barry says, what would your answer be? It's a great question. What would your answer be if Magnus Carlsen claimed to be the greatest chess player of all time? Look, I don't think it's for Magnus Carlsen, Gary Kasparov, whoever to claim uh, himself to be the greatest player of all time. I'm always very cautious in, 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 in making this assessment because it's about, you know, it's about uh, players who live in different times. Some say Bobby Fischer was the greatest. Uh, some could go back to Paul Morphy. I mean, I, yeah, I'm very happy with my own record. So uh, this is of, of global dominance. Magnus is a phenomenal player and he definitely belongs to the very top of the, of, of the best. But uh, making, uh, making uh, such far-fetching claims, probably it's to be premature. What would, would you, would, would you, have, you, have you declined, Gary, since you gave up professionally in 2005? How, how far from that level are you now? And how far has chess, like sprinting, has basically become, you've basically got faster. Has, has chess developed in the same way? Have people got better at chess? Look, yes, they, they got better because they know more. So that's because they learn from us. I mean, Magnus Carlsen learned from me, actually, not, not only from the books, but I spent one year working with him in yes. 2009, 2010. And it's the natural. So I learned from Karpov and Fischer, and Karpov learned from Botvinnik. So that's why, again, it's, 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 it's trying to actually compare, you know, the, the, the great talent is, is tough. Okay, it's, people are, can argue forever who was a better football player, Pelé, Maradona, or Messi. So, and this is a, I think the answer will depend very much on generation. So that's, this is real, whether you saw, you know, Pele at his best years or Maradona, it's sorry, it's probably painful moments for, 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 for British uh, so football fans. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, uh, uh, and I, I, again, I, I, I try to be, again, it's very defensive on, 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 on this, on this issue. And I, um, um, and I, regarding my own strengths, absolutely. I mean, just, I'm not near for a simple reason, my mind is elsewhere. I just don't have the concentration. 
Look, I, I, I play exhibition games and very often, you know, just very lousy chess against top players. Sometimes I could even, you know, upset the strongest players because I still know how to move the pieces. But concentrating, you know, it's because my mind can just, it's, it's, it's occupied with so many things. And chess, you know, chess is, is, is you know, is, 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 a, is a cruel game. I, I played one, you know, once against top world player Caruana in, 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 in uh, so-called Fisher Random Chess in, in St. Louis. And I got so many great positions, winning positions, and then I blew it up. And I just was so upset, you know, by losing the match because I had winning positions. I almost got him. Uh, and of course, you know, 20 years, 20 years earlier, so I would finish it, you know, with my eyes closed. And my wife, the doctor, told me, Gary, it's justice, you know. Imagine if you had won, that would be so bad for chess. Chess kept developing. You all you know you're an amateur, they're professional. <laughs> we, we, we talked about Fisher, we talked about Short, we talked about you, we talked about others. Carlson, we do you think nationality has any impact on how people play? Do you think a Russian player might have a different no. different type no. of approach to American? Nothing to do with it. Uh, I I don't think so. I look, we have now one of the uh, look. The world champion is Magnus Carlson. Yeah, the uh, he will be challenged by by a Russian player in 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 ten days time in in, in Dubai in a match. Yanni Pomnishi. So um, they play different. Magnus is more like, not Karpov style, but more uh, balanced style. The problem is far more aggressive style. Now, the, the rising star, the youngest uh, 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 rising star now is, uh, is Ali, uh, um, Aliriza Ferruja. He's an Iranian who lives in France. He's 18. And it's the, you expect Iranian to be a very dynamic, aggressive player? No, he's actually more like uh, uh, Karpov. So no, not exactly carpool, but it's just, you know, it's the, it's the style that is just is more of counter-attack, counter-punch, not immediate attack. I don't see any, any immediate connection between nationality and the country you're born and raised and your playing style. Here's another great question from the audience. How did we, we haven't talked much about defeat, you see, and how we pick ourselves up from that. This question says, when you, when you lost a game of chess, how did you feel? And what did you do to recover your self-confidence? Now, I didn't lose too many games, yeah, but as, uh, if you look at my, 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 my uh, chess bio and my, and my uh, uh, tournament results, uh, but uh, for me, every loss, every loss was, um, was a physical pain because I, I always blame myself. So for me, that was a clear demonstration. Something went wrong and I, you know, I, I could beat, you know, my head against the wall, but it was all about me. So just, I never looked for any excuse. So it's just, it's still, love. defeat was just, you know, a demonstration that you did something wrong. So, and you, you have to work hard, you know, you have to double, redouble uh, your efforts. Here's a question from a 10 year old. This is from Ishan, who's in, in, he was in, in England, lives in England. He has two questions. What was your hardest chess match and who was it against? And for younger children who enjoy chess, what would your advice be to get better? <laughs> Um, look, the, 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 the most memorable match naturally was, was Karpov because I, I played so many matches with him and, uh, and they, still, they still stick in my memory. Um, uh, and uh, we played uh, five World Championship matches. You know, it's the, I think it's an absolute record not only for chess but for any, any sport. So our competition started in 1984 uh, uh, and it was a marathon and it ended in 1990. So that's, this is the 144 match games not counting other games that we played in the tournament. Now, as for the young kids, enjoy the game. So there's, there's no, again, there's no tip that can help you to get better. It's, this is, unlike us, you have so much, uh, um, uh, um, so many opportunities uh, to learn chess uh, uh, by just, you know, just looking at the computer screen. So we had to struggle to find books. So just, you know, I, I, I showed my, um, um, my notebooks from the 70s that my mother saved, thanks God. So to my daughter, she's 15. I mean, she was shocked, you know, to find out that, you know, the way we wrote these games. And I even had this, the special chess, uh, uh, the special set from East Germany that was a gift from my coach. I could put a diagram there just, you know, and then to put the pieces there, just basically creating my own book. So you should enjoy an opportunity to actually learn about the game. And, uh, and uh, again, just move, move forward. So it's, the, it's, it's a great moment of being a chess player because it's, it's online. You don't have to think about finding opponents and, and, and finding uh, uh, latest news from the, from the world of chess.
This is an important question. It's from Alison. And I mean, it's been, just been ex accepted, I suppose, because it's been a fact. It's been accepted perhaps by too many people that chess at the top level is a male game. Alison says, where are the female chess champions? Why are they so marginalized in the game? Look, it's the chess is the is, is the game, so you can just enter the game and you can just uh, play it, and then 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 the, the strongest player wins. Uh, so um, while we still see this this this, this the, the male dominance in the game, uh, except you know of course the the queen's gambit, uh, um, uh, it's it's the, the gap keeps closing. So this is the 50, 60 years ago, the gap was really huge. So as, as Bobby Fischer even bragged that in 61 or 62, that he could offer a handicap, an extra piece to any female player. I doubt very much he could there, just, you know, we already had no longer the rising, you know, there on the horizon, few strong Soviet players. Yeah, but, but still, that's, that was an attitude. Right now, it's, it's, I, I doubt very much that Magnus Carlsen would be comfortable offering a pawn to the to 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 a strong female female player and Judith Polgar, you know, she proved that you know nothing it was impossible. She was top ten player for a few years, so she she never made it to the top top two or three, but she was top ten player. And uh, all of us, you know, suffered you know painful defeat from her hand because she was actually very aggressive, very dynamic player. So I think it's about numbers. It's about the fact is that there the, the so few, uh, when you look at, it, at, at, at the distribution of male, boys and girls in the, in the game of chess, at age probably 10 or, 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 or 11, it's, it's already 9 to 1. So the girls basically dropped. So, and, and statistically, that's, that's, that's what decides because this talent exists everywhere and it's spread around the globe on, uh, in every place. It's the, but the, it's about opportunities. And so far, the, uh, the um, opportunities um, you know, were not denied, but just they were not offered to, 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 the, uh, to uh, females same way as, as to, to the boys. Hopefully, the, the Queen's Gambit will change this, this, uh, the attitude towards uh, women chess. And you were a consultant on the Queen's Gambit. Everyone wants to talk to you about the Queen's Gambit, but we're, we're running out of time. This is, I think, a really good question because the, the attacking mindset and the advantages that, that sometimes accrue to, uh, to, to the aggressive player, how important is starting? How important is, is, is making a statement early on? How important is your opening gamut? This, this questioner says, do you always open a game with the same move or do you mix it up when not competing professionally? Look, it's the, uh, the there are many chess openings, different chess openings, and uh, uh, when you know when I played when I played chess professionally, so we moved you know from days where you know first five six moves were known, some openings ten moves, but but mostly again it was at the it's in single single digits. Uh, uh, now we are, we are at the point where many openings are just 8 and 20 moves, you know, just de 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 developed, you know, the 20, 8 and 20 moves deep. So you already know what's the, what's, what are the best moves from both sides because we are computers. Uh, that's why the popular game these days is what I mentioned already, Fisher Random uh, 960, when the pieces op in opening position pieces are being reshuffled. So that's why you have nine, 960 different positions, and that's why that kills kills opening theory, and that's that's more entertaining because from move two or three you already have some new ideas to 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 find out. Um, so um, some players, you know, again going back to my days, some players stuck to few openings. I was one of them, so I played. I, I don't have many openings, but I still played very few. But I knew them really deep. So some players, you know, prefer you know to play to play uh, uh, various openings. Again, dependent on your you know, psychological comfort and, and the way you wanted to analyze the game. I was a researcher, so that's why I wanted to go deep, 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 especially when we had even imperfect computers helping us. So I, I, I was, a, you know, um, uh, a player that is known for having few famous openings that are that connected to my name, where I just introduced tons of new ideas. Let's just finish with this question from Jonathan. It's, he says, hi, Gary, my father, who also sadly died young, was a huge chess fan, and especially of yours. As a child, I was frequently taken to exhibitions of Russian players and then read his copy of The Queen's Gambit. So it's fantastic to see you tonight. Beth's abilities to think a number of moves ahead and anticipate her opponent's moves was a huge asset to her. Do you use this same incredible ability in everyday situations away from the chessboard? Oh. It's going back to an early question that you asked. I wish the world of chess, the world we live in, 
you know, could 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 could, could be um, uh, uh, run by the rules. So that's as we could actually rely on our opponents respecting the rules by making these calculations. I, you know, when people ask me about my, for instance, Russian uh, uh, activities, whether it, it just helped me there, I said, look, it didn't because in chess we have fixed rules and unpredictable results. It Putin's it's Russia is exactly the book. opposite. It is the title of your book, like exactly. chess, how life imitates chess. Exactly. Yes, but it's the it's it's you know what chess helped me is actually it's this is it's about making making the, the projection. So what can I do in this situation? I know who am I am I I know again, I know I know my strengths, I know the limits of my ignorance. And it's again it's very important that I I could be very realistic in making assessments uh, and, and, and just again, finding this or the right algorithm for me to remain relevant. I hate feeling redundant. So, and I know, I know how to make myself relevant by just I injecting my energy, my, my skills, my experience, my knowledge into something that, you know, again, keeps me, keeps me alive, keeps, keeps me, uh, moving up and forward. It's such a privilege to talk to you. And I was very sad to hear in your opening remarks that you lost your mother yeah. to COVID. And I, I, I guess I just want to finish by asking you what makes you happy because you seem so alive, so passionate, so full of ideas. You want to continue to make a difference in the world. Um, look, I'm... Um, I... Um, since I left professional chess, so yes, I started my new life. So it's the, it's also, you know, was a new private life. I married and we built with my wife, Dasha, a new life. Thanks to her. Now it's in New York. So it's, 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 it's not, I never thought about, you know, building my new life outside of my, my uh, mother's country. Um, we have two kids. I mentioned Aida, she's 15. The little one is six. I have two other kids from my previous life, 28 and 24. But I'm, I believe, you know, this is right now, I, you know, I, I have a, I reach certain harmony. I, again, I know who am I, I know where I am, I know what, you know, to expect. I, you know, I don't have um, overgrown expectations about Putin's collapse tomorrow. But, you know, I, I, I found, you know, so many areas where I could, I could feel relevant. So I'm, I'm, I regularly speak about AI. I've been working with Avast Software for my it's five years as a security ambassador. I do chess, promoting chess through Kasparov's foundation. I'm involved in, 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 in American politics through Renew Democracy Initiative. I write a lot. I have massive following uh, on social media. And again, I'm happy with my family life. So just, you know, I, my daughter, is she's a great writer. So my little one, you know, shows also other talents. So again, it's about recognizing that every day in your life, you can make a difference. That's why I'm happy. And to end on an optimistic note, if you, when, when you are able to go back to Russia, what would be the first thing you do? Look, it's the, the good news, you know, for Russia that if I'm able to come back, that's already a free country. So, and uh, I'm not, I'm not saying I would try to, to, to become so it's the, the driving force of the change there, though I will be more than happy to invest my time, my energy and, 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 and my, my, you know, put my reputation at stake to help those who will be in charge to bring Russia back uh, to the family of civilized nations and just to uh, guarantee that Russia will no longer be a source of problems, but rather uh, of, of, you know, um, and, and a, a potential solution for many, many challenges. And again, I'll be more than happy to uh, help my country to, to be reintegrated in the free world. Look, thank you so much. Your, your book, how... But actually, the first thing, I'm sorry, the first thing I will do in Russia, that's, that's this is, I will go to my mother's grave. Which is an incredibly powerful and moving thing to say. And this book, How Life Imitates, Chess is a fascinating read for people. We've only scratched the surface. I, I hope that that Russia imitates you eventually, but with any luck, sooner than eventually, because you obviously have so much to offer, and it would, as you say, mean that Russia becomes a free country once again, and it's a, a great country. Thank you to you for giving us so much time, for giving us that extra time as well. Thank you to everyone for, for joining this evening. Do tell friends it's available on Catch Up as, as Thank well. Thank you. Gary Kasparov, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Okay, and goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much. Okay, bye.